Hey, it's Lee here again with Dispute B. In the last video, we showed you how to create your first round of letters that you're going to send to credit bureaus as well as the debt collector. Now we're going to just cover a few basic items that you want to know about before you actually put those letters in the mail. And the first thing is um, regarding the amount of accounts that you dispute at one time. So let's go back to the screen where you actually create new disputes. You only want to select up to a maximum of three to five accounts at one time when you're sending a letter. Now some of you might not even have that many collections on your credit report, in which case it doesn't matter. But if you have a credit report that looks like this one, where you have many collection accounts, you only want to select again up to three to five accounts. Now you can send them uh, to all three credit bureaus, but three accounts, for example, would be what I've selected here. You can see that these top three rows, um, I've checked the boxes for every credit bureau for those three accounts, and that's fine. That's what you would do in your first 30 days, and you would want to wait until month two before you select, let's say, these next uh, three accounts. And that's because if you choose too many accounts to dispute on one letter to a credit bureau, sometimes they say that it's frivolous and they'll send you back a letter saying that this is a frivolous dispute and we're going to ignore it and we're going to throw it out. So in order to make sure that you don't run into that problem, only dispute up to three to five accounts maximum every 30 days. So just wait until month two before you send your next three, wait till month three to send your next three and so on and then you should be fine. The other thing you want to do is anytime you're sending a letter to a credit bureau is to make sure that you include uh, a copy of your driver's license and a picture of a utility bill. The credit bureaus require you to provide this proof so that they know that you are who you say you are. If you don't do that, um, they're going to send you back a letter that says they think they received some type of suspicious communication from somebody they can't I verify the identity of. It's essentially a stalling tactic on their end, but to make sure that you don't run into that problem, always include a copy of your driver's license and a picture of a utility bill. And the last thing is to make sure that you send these letters via certified mail. So that means when you go to the post office, you want to, it's going to cost you about three to four dollars and you want to send every letter via certified mail and this is going to give you proof that the recipient actually received your letter. So when the credit bureau receives your letter and they know that you sent a certified mail, they know that they're going to have to respond within 30 days. If you don't send it via certified mail, they can quote unquote accidentally forget that they received this letter. Nobody has proof that they received it and if they don't respond within 30 days, they're not going to be held accountable for that. So to make sure that they're actually going to respond to your dispute, you want to make sure that you send all of these letters via certified mail. And so that's it. If you follow those three things, again, it's the speed at which you send uh, the letters. Again, you don't want to dispute more than a maximum of three to five new accounts every month. You want to make sure that you include your identity proof when you send something to a credit bureau and you want to make sure that you send everything via certified mail and that's it as long as you follow those three things you shouldn't run into any problems when you're sending these letters so at this point you've already generated your letters you've probably printed them out and now it's time to put them in the envelopes address the envelopes to the addresses that we have already populated on the letters themselves and then send them via certified mail at your local post office.